Welcome, everyone, to the Real Hoobians cast. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212, and I am with the legendary Matt Edwards. What's up, Matt? Hello, hello. How are you all today? Nice to be here. So, I made you watch the Frog episode. You did, yes. Let me get this thing out of the way here. You did make me watch it, and I must say, I didn't really hate the episode up until that certain point. I have to say, I agree with you on that. It was going in a good direction. But then, <laughs> oh, then everything just took the stereotypical, new, schmaltzy, everything's got to be cute angle that every episode always seems to take. And my God. Puppet work on that frog wasn't even good. <laughs> I, I, and I mean this unironically, right? Jim Henson gave Kermit more believable mouth flaps than that frog. More they, believable lip movements. Than they that just frog. leaped right off the pad and went right when it got to the end. <laughs> That was bad. Yes, the whole episode basically just revolves around having to break up with a frog, basically. Yeah. Whole universe. Just like, oh, I can't be with you. <laughs> the, the, the one thing that would have made that more cheesy is if she would have said, we need to see other people. Yeah. I mean. That was crazy. First of all, I couldn't even understand the whole, like, reasoning why were they so easily taken that this was their loved ones? It's so obvious that they weren't. Who would be fooled by something like that? I mean, it, that guy, because he was looking to get one thing. I mean, really? Again, like, what's his name? Graham? Is, is yeah. that his name? Is, Graham. Okay. How could Graham be convinced within the span of five minutes that it's her? Right. He knew, he knew from the start that it wasn't her. And all it took was one bit of information about the frog necklace, which still doesn't make sense because of how the hell did the universe figure that out? Right. Like, how, how did the frog monster figure that out? And, uh, I, I don't know. You know, if, and if it knew about the frog necklace, how come it didn't know that she would care that Ryan was out there? Exactly. That's another thing. Yes. Yeah. So, meaning the universe didn't know shit. Plot holes you can drive a truck through, man. I and another thing, like this is another thing that pisses me off about this show, right? Uh, fucking the little jokes that they throw in, like especially in the third act. That oh, I was a little bit zonked there. Six out of ten. I fucking hate when new to who does that shit. Yeah, especially when they're playing like danger music in the background and they're playing <laughs> the music. Score that's trying to build tension to a serious moment. Right. Let me just make light of it and make funny gear. Ha ha, funny doctor. Bullshit. I ate this shit. I cannot tell you how much. And I'm sorry for cursing because I know in the last. That's part, fine. I didn't really curse. But the, the fucking writing is just so goddamn terrible. Yeah. It was shit. I mean, I mean not, not from a, a plot standpoint, right? Because the angle. Like you said, it was going in a good direction. It was in a great direction. It would but, have been a but, nine out of ten if they would have did the ending right. But like the, it's it's not just the direction. Dialogue matters, regardless of what the plot is. Character interactions matter. The way the doctor handles the situation matters. And when she's like, "Oh, I don't really know what's on there. Let me just stick my head in there." Whoops. Oops. Yeah, what was that about? Yeah. They got chopped like, off. Fucking, and again, like, would would even the fucking Colin Baker's doctor have done that? No. Would Tom Baker's doctor have done that? No. No. It's, it, Matt Smith probably would have done it because, you know, he's the cute, lovable, whimsical baby face. <laughs> I, I just, I hate, I hate this idea that the, the doctor has to fumble it. It, their way through every situation. Like, right. it's like a two-year-old. He's got the mind of a two-year-old, and that's not, that's not the case. Right. In, in no way did Jodie Whittaker convince me in that episode 
that she was playing a being with billions and billions and billions of years worth of knowledge of space and time. Right. And that side story about the grandma was fucking bullshit also. How about that? The girl was blind. He created all that fake stuff to scare the shit out of her. And he said, there's food in the fridge just so he could have sex with this universe. It's like, what the hell? Like, like really, that that was the least of my problems with it. I mean, I <laughs> there, there's so much... I, I did Kill like, moths? I did like the moth bit. Like, I like the idea of the zone or whatever it was, the negative zone. Uh, Anti-zone or whatever it is, yeah. I like how they called it a quote-unquote conscious universe instead of saying what it was, which was God. Right. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be honest. A, a conscious universe that's all seeing is pretty much as close to God as you can get. Right. Um, Basically. I don't know. Like, again, it's not like it's bad. It's just so... It terrible. ruined it. The whole frog thing ruined it for everybody. For everybody. Again, like, could you see like Martin talking to a frog going, you have to let me go. I want to stay with you forever, but you got to let me go because you'll be destroyed, but we'll always be friends. And, and, you, know, and you know that plot, friendship is magic. No. <laughs> that, whole, that whole scene only worked the way it did in the context of what it was meant to do. They only approached it from that angle because the doctor was a woman. Right. She could approach it from the, the the aspect of we need to see other people. If it would have been like David Tennant, he's like, listen, um, you know, I got to go. So, you know. <laughs> if it would have been, been any doctor, he would have given it a speech about, listen, you don't need to be with other people. Right. You need to just focus on being yourself because being yourself is the most wonderful thing you can be. And there's right. no need to be ashamed of that. One right. day, maybe our universe can get buried, but for now... For this moment, it's not wise, my friend. You you need to just yeah. go on being you and I. Oh, I'll always love you. Fucking the doctor would not say that. It reminds me of like brother love. Remember that? I love you. Yeah. I all love you. All you people. <laughs> brother bearer, please tell us who is this man you brought here today? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh no but as i gotta tell you like the companion dynamic i'm not feeling it i don't even know who the chick is supposed to be like i can't even remember her name yasmin khan uh, oh that's her name <laughs> <laughs> like that's how forgettable she is yeah and like, like i don't care about these people right I think, who fuck I think, cares I didn't care about Ryan. Ryan Sinclair, don't you dare. Yeah. I, I, like, oh. No, so that, that was a good part of the episode, though. The beginning of the episode, like, this is bullshit. <laughs> like, Ryan Sinclair is like, yeah, this is bullshit, mate. This is bullshit. <laughs> I cry bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. How you know your dad didn't leave you? Oh, wait, I was right. <laughs> oh, shit. The whole, um... Oh, you lied to me. It's like, why do I care if he lied to her? I've got, right. I've got no emotional attachment to these people. I've yeah. got no reason to care whether she lied to him or not. I would have rather seen Matt's who shack than that shack. No, it's, <laughs> like, no, no, it's like, from a plot standpoint, I've only known this character, what, five minutes? Right. And they already expect me to care that she's been lied to. Why? She's... This blind girl right. has got no character. It would make more sense if she started to trust him first and then was lied to by him. But, like, when you spring on, when you spring on the audience that early that, oh, I was lied to, it's like, where is the emotional weight? Yeah. There, there, was no, there was nothing betrayed there. You had no reason to trust him from the beginning. Why do you feel hurt? You mm -hmm. know? It's it's basic writing one on one. I it I'm sorry people, but like I've been writing stuff in my own sort of time and I'm trying to get a handle on proper ways to write characters and character development. This is not the way that you build no. investment toward a character. If you want me to care about that blind girl, then she needs to form a relationship with one of the crew members and then feel betrayed. 
And then right. you can say, why did you lie to me? Right. You've known that guy for all of five minutes and suddenly she thinks, right. oh, you've done this such a like, uh, thing. This is like everybody's a Facebook friend and yeah. you don't even know who they are. It's like, yeah. that's my friend. That's my fan. Mm -hmm. That's my mates. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you, your, mates, shit. your mates compared to the girl that you cried your eyes out over and found in a floating space town a couple of seasons ago, right? We're, yeah. we're supposed to pretend now that you're so close to these people when you've been with other companions for literally billions of years in, yeah. in the show's time period. Yeah, I know. Like, these people... These people know next to nothing about you, and you're acting like you're such a tight unit with them. Pardon the pun. I guess we could. No, we can't have unit this season. I forgot. Yeah, but, uh, that's nice to, to write off unit that way. Wow. Uh, I mean, chibs. We, we already discussed that, but hey, yeah. Even so, like, I don't know. I don't know what they're going for, man. I, I just don't. It'd be one thing if. You said, okay, I'm going to let you gradually know more about me as the season goes on. Right. But, but we're only on episode nine by this point, and she's yeah. already said, oh, where did I just click ever? It's like, dude, you probably have known each other for all of what, like, uh, in actual show time, like, what, maybe a couple months? Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, this was episode nine. There's ten episodes of the season, one special. They should have had their groove together already. They should have been like, they're not yeah. really, you know, but it, it's funny. It's like sporadically you saw the special, you saw the ninth. There is like like the first episode I like of her because it, it takes off from the end of Capaldi, you know, and it just it, it I really like it. Um, even though it's some craziness with the bike riding, but that we that you saw Doctor Who poop thing. But it's you know, a, again like the whole. Why does he believe that that's her, dude? It's him. Like two minutes to do a complete emotional lady. Well, you know what? Let me let me say this. Of the whole season, I think you would really like the Witch Finders. Why? Which is Alan Cumming. I don't know. I think you might like that. Because the villain actually looked cool and they were cool kind of. Well, so, I'll tell you, I that did was like, a good episode. I did like the design of the uh Bandito guy that was in the uh, ribbons. Yeah, yeah, nice name, ribbons. They call the guy, yeah. right? Um, but that's kind of what I want to see. I want to see more alien creatures, more alien settings. But I just, I've always hated how New Who has this thing where oh, we can only be on Earth, and if we go into a new planet, it's basically once per season or twice per season. Yeah, they got all of space and time to work with, and. For whatever reason, these writers are right. no, They go there off air. Like, we don't see where they go. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know? Like, and that, hell, all the stuff we talk about, I was, like, I believe in the New Year's Day special. They were talking about, oh, we saw fireworks in this fucking... Area space, right. Yeah, fucking uh, Krakatoa or whatever, whatever their locations were that right. they said. It's like, well, why couldn't we have seen it? Why couldn't we have seen something like from a location like that? Not yeah. a fucking airspace. Five seconds. Going as planet Earth. It's yeah. You know what? The thing about this season is it's that it's standalone. So you could just like you could just go right into episode nine without ever seeing episode one to eight. And yeah. it they don't connect at all. So that's why it was easy for you to just get in there because it's like, fuck it. And I got to tell you, like, I'll say it again. The only companion that I have any sort of reason to feel emotionally invested in is Graham because I know what his loss is like. He's obviously lost this person. Yeah. I He seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. I would just like to see him travel with the doctor by himself. Right. These other two people I don't care about. And yeah. that seems weird, considering the fact that I watch the episode with, like, him, Ryan and his dad. It's like... Or the ending towards the whole story, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I was supposed to watch it from, like, episode well, one. Well, you just, five. you know, it's fun, because you know what? You weren't invested in the season. Now, you, now it piqued your interest a little bit, where you may go back, you know? I... I don't know whether there's any incentive to really, like, pull, pull but If I were you, here's the thing. If I were you, if you're going to watch one more episode, I, I would watch it out of order. I would I would go to The Witch Finders, watch that, and then if you're invested a little more, then you can watch it from the beginning. But 
I, I like the Witch Finders. I, I, I really did. It's one of one of the episodes I liked. You might like it too. There's a reason why this season is rated so lowly by so many people. I cannot even tell you. Like, I know the viewing audience that we have here won't know it, but I go on several forums, yeah. and they have all topic six sections. And there's a uh, there's enter- entertainment boards where we talk about TV shows we watch. Mm-hmm. There's Doctor Who threads that I, that I post in. And even they are like, why do we why do we want to watch this crap? Casual Who fans. Yeah. People that have only known Doctor Who from the revival onwards. And if yeah. you're watching this, you know what you are because there's probably a couple of my friends that will see me on here. But there are people that have only seen the revival portion of Doctor Who. They know nothing about classic Who. Mm-hmm. And even they think that this season is a big steaming pile of crap. So, yeah, it is. So what message is the BBC sending to its casual audience when they can't even maintain the average show, the people that know nothing about Doctor Who? Like, if we hardcore fans are pissed, All right? you know... Well, the only thing I could say, not to, be, to play devil's advocate, is that this is a showrunner's first season. Sort of like Series one was Russell T. Davis's first season. And you know, it went from season one to season two was like a lot different. Mm-hmm. And then season three, you know? So the only thing I can say is, like I've been saying constantly, maybe he had to get his feet wet. Maybe he had to get it. Cause he was a writer for Doctor Who before. Yeah. Maybe he had to get his groove in. And now with resolution, I think, even though that's better than the other episodes, he could do a lot more. So maybe series 12 and even Jody too, Jody, you know, when you see Capaldi from his first season in Series 8, in Series 9, Series 10, he's just very different in every season. So maybe Jody needed to get her used to her character. And then by the time she does, they'll shit kind of like they did Capaldi. And like, so what, what She'll be so much season? better maybe next year, I think. She might it, be. The thing is, I just need Doctor Who in general to just tone down the silly ass jokes that come across is so forced all the time. Oh, that yeah. was a six out of ten. I wish I could remember, but my head was so like, oh, my grandma always told me she was a double agent for the sidelines, but I trust her on this. <laughs> that but that doesn't work. It, that's terrible. The doctor would not say those things. Well, the doctor lies, as we've seen in Resolution, lies yeah, the, the shit out of the dollar. Because that's the continuity they build for one another, so they can just explain the way lazy ass writing. That's right, like he's full of shit. He wasn't with the Zygons. He didn't know where the Zygons were. Yes, hold on a second. Yeah. See, this is this is the point. Like, I wish I had more reason to be invested into this show, but until they really give me a solid track record of good episodes, yeah, you know, you can't yeah, be, you know. I, I, I'm trying, man. Like, I tried all last season to think, okay, well, maybe the, maybe the new doctor that they get to replace Capaldi will be good. And right. then Johnny Whitaker comes, and I'm like, okay, maybe your costume will sell me on her. And then the costume comes, and she looks like freaking Mork and Mindy revisiting. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> so, I know. And then I'm like, okay, well, maybe the, maybe the teaser trailer will convince me. And then it just, it did. Like, I wanted to turn the corner. I really, really did. But nothing yeah. is, nothing has grabbed me and convinced me that this, this show's in good hands. It's like she knocked uh, on the door and, she's, and you're like, nah, I'm not buying. Thanks. You shut the door on her face. <laughs> it's like. Like, I, I really, really wish that I could, that I could say that I'm enjoying this season because you know. For those of you that haven't seen me, I just wanted to point out, like I did in the last video, in past seasons, I was always the guy that I'd say, come on, guys, let's look on the bright side. Let's give the writers the benefit of the doubt. The snowman wasn't a bad Christmas special, guys. Lighten right. up. You know, the 50th anniversary wasn't a bad special, guys. Lighten up. Right. And everybody chastised me for it. But and now they- I'm trying to get you motivated into it. And it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. But then Series 9 came. And a fucking space diner just killed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like these these writers don't care. They just do whatever they think makes them feel good in the moment. Like, wouldn't it be so cute 
if we had the doctor talk to a fucking cute frog, we could make an animatronic for that. If, oh, Capaldi, just... if Capaldi's doctor had to talk to a frog, he'd probably take it by the legs and pulling it. Yeah. It wouldn't yeah. even talk to it. Like, and I understand, like, we've had wacky monsters in Doctor Who before. We've had the Jadoon, we've had the Ood, we've had the Spoonheads. Shout out to our good friend, Kiss the Clown. Spoonheads! But, uh, hey! <laughs> but, uh, no, the fact is, it's not the monsters that are the problem. It's the execution, right? I have no problem with the cute things. But come on, that frog. Like I said, Ed, let's move it like this. Yeah, it, did, it, did it was just crap. <laughs> like, that that universe could have taken on any form. Yeah. Oh, let me just use a frog, because it, it reminds me of her. Like, again, how does he even know about her and her obsession with frogs? Right. It, it read, it, it, like, it, it makes no you sense. You read somebody's mind? I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah stupid. Uh, but they don't yeah. think about those things. Like, I know. These writers... Like I said, this is the problem when you have writers that don't have any experience writing freaking sci-fi. Yeah, that's a big that's a big issue. If you don't know how the laws of time travel work on television, maybe you shouldn't be writing for a show involving time travel. Exactly. Jesus Christ, you'd think these people would have experience because there's 50 years worth of footage they can draw on. Just let them see how a doctor should act instead of acting like a Freaking idiot! Every time they're on screen and open their mouth. Thank God you didn't see the handkerchief monster. Oh, two. I'm sure. Jesus. And I, and again, guys, like I'm not trying to make waves on anybody that happened to like this season. If you enjoyed this season, if it's your cup of tea, fine. I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. Yeah. But I have to say, in my opinion, because I watch all eras of Doctor Who from. The old series to the new series. And I've seen some pretty crabby old series fans that refuse to give anything for the new series of Fair Shake. Looking at you, Harry. But I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, people can like what they like. But this, for me, this isn't it, Chief. I just got to say. Yeah. I'm just. So will we get one more episode out of you? Um, will we get you to watch the her beginning, maybe? Well, I've at watched. Least. I've watched the finale. I've watched this. And I guess, so I guess we're going by a pure three strike rule. I guess I'm owed one more episode. So but, maybe uh, you should see her beginning before you see the witch binders because maybe that, you know, you'll well, see I her said, how she starts. Well, I said one more. So either it's the beginning or it's the witch binders. You have to tell me uh, what, is, what is more worth it. I, I, you know what? See the the woman who fell to earth. See her when she debuted. At least you could say you saw the beginning, you saw the end. See, now this is how good Matrix is, right? He, I didn't even want to get this season the first shake to begin with because I knew that it was going to be this bad. I've not been proven wrong in the slightest. Every episode is what I predicted it was going to be, even right down to the Rhodes episode, which I have no interest in seeing because I know exactly what they're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I didn't want to give this a chance, but here Matrix is telling me, oh, but you, you should, because, you know, it's, it's not... Even if it's bad, <laughs> just to yeah. see, like, your reaction would be priceless. It's like... And, and again, like, you guys don't, like, there used to come a time when I'd be the one telling him this stuff. Yeah. I so the kinda... rules have reversed. I don't even know what timeline this is anymore. That's right. I think we're in 2019, I think. Yeah. yeah. This is, it's weird, man. I, I, I guess I'll watch that one episode and then find the hang it up. But I got to tell you, the season isn't gripping me. I'll give it How about this? Day. How about you watch The Woman Who Fell to Earth with, with a, how about you watch A Woman Fell to Earth and maybe Wishfinders? I, at least, at least. Because you know what? You know what? You got to look for, for the guest star. Just think about it like that. See, so that's this is it. what I go through for you, the viewers, because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing this. But you see what yeah. I do for you guys? That's right. I'm doing Your fans, it. He's back. I'm doing it for you. People are so excited. I'm literally stabbing myself in the ribs for, right. for you guys. He, he basically took his, his DNA out and created, like, 
a little Matt Edward Daleks. Like that's what he did, basically. Oh, okay. Oh, but you know, <laughs> we shouldn't waste freaking regeneration energy because right. that's the thing, though, right? River Song. And I like to give like my energy to my worst enemy that killed millions of people. Absolutely, no. <laughs> like <laughs> we we could go on and on about what a clusterfuck River Song is too, but we we won't we don't get into that. Right. Uh, but. I don't know, guys. Bottom line for me, this episode, like, pretty much echoing Matrix's opinion here. Great idea, great concept. But then at the end, in that third act, just everything. It just gave me warts. It just gave me warts. Bonkers, dude. It leaped off the pad. And, and like, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Ed Heim? Yeah. Who wrote this episode? God, he's coming back too. Did you More like Ed can't draw a dime. They they hired him back because of the frog. They loved it. Chibs loves it. See, in wrestling terms, we have a saying: that guy can't draw a dime, and uh, this rider can't draw a dimes either, brother. Jesus, Cut him. send Stop. him back to the mid card. Send him back to the lily pod. Lily yeah. pad. <laughs> I wish he wasn't here next season, but this is the timeline we're living in. I know. It's right. It's a response to the times we're living in. Says Chidnall. Uh, not to that, but I don't so know. So you'll be watching the next one, right? The woman who fell to earth. You're gonna okay, check it out. I'll, I'll watch the woman who fell to the earth. The next. And we'll one, get back to you. The fucking witch finders. I, I'm making no promises. I'm already torturing myself as it is. But again, oh, I'm doing right. it for you guys. So if you guys are enjoying these reactions, let us know. And then yes, let know. Matt Edwards know you want him to see more. And he will make that decision. Because, like, even I've told him before, I'm like, do people actually want to know what I think about this stuff? Yes. You should see the comments. You saw the comments? Yeah, I did see people it. People want to see you. We did. People were very gracious. I appreciate yeah, that. People are really happy. They're like, and oh, my. actually had, which I was surprised, at a positive like to dislike ratio. So. Well, you can't um, really pay attention to that because somebody can create 25 accounts and dislike it 25 times in, like, five minutes. Yeah. So, like, you can't really judge by that. Nobody, well, I, even I, YouTube I, doesn't judge that by it anymore. So, I was actually happy people seemed to genuinely like it. And uh, as long as they seem to care, I guess I'll keep doing this for you guys. You know what so. the funny thing is? When you came back, what was it, like a month or two ago, right? Mm -hmm. You were on the Everything Show. I, I, you weren't even on the Real Who Means. And, and somebody pointed it out that, like, holy crap. Matt Edwards returns to the Real Who Beans. Like, the last time you were on was like 500 and. 43 now we're at 1543 i mean it's like um, holy crap well like in a fairness, thousand that, real that number is a little bit inflated because i know you do cast for everything so yeah so, like a thousand casts or something that you didn't appear on for a real game don't you ever get tired of doing all these casts dude no because i love it it's it's a stress it's a de-stressor a stress relief yeah it doesn't pay the bills it doesn't even pay for a box of cheerios but you know what though i have fun so there you go. And that's and now really I gotta go to work. <laughs> that's really what it is all right. So I'm gonna let Matrix go before he gets Oh, before you go, it. yeah. I, I I didn't get to show you yesterday. They had this big sale in um JHU Comics and I got like this for a dollar. Oh, I saw that on the other cast. So yeah, I got those? them for a dollar each and they and they still got I might go back and get more because just you know, I wouldn't buy this for friggin' four dollars each because you know, but I will now. And and, spent, and the Docking Magazine's gotten super expensive lately, too, which I can't even get that anymore either. But they have them for a dollar also. And those are uh, comic books? Yeah. What are they? Just... They're, Chris, uh, they had a run for each doctor. So Chris Faxon's and, ninth doctor. And they're not new, I'm sure, right? No, they've been a couple of years, past couple of years, you know. What yeah. we need is we need a Eggleston run and Big Finish. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That would be great. I, I cannot stress this enough. For any of you that are as disenfranchised about this season as I am, do yourselves a favor and listen to some of the Big Finish audios that are out yeah. there. They're great. They give more life to the classic doctors. They do. Uh, the Doctor Who story is better than the other ones do on TV. Yeah. It's just it's, it's miles better than what we're getting from the BBC. I'm telling you that. I know. So I'm going to let Matrix go before he gets fired. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you, Matt Edwards. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.